A vacation in the beautiful Wisconsin North Woods is like a trip to paradise. You'll see it all. Crystal clear water, incredible scenery, and so much more. All in a peaceful, relaxing setting. But it's what you don't see that has the locals upset. What's missing from this shot? See any buses? And if you do see a cab, it's probably on the way to the airport to pick up an out-of-town businessman. So here's the problem. Most of the jobs up here are low-paying, tourism-related part-time jobs, jobs that don't pay much. So many of the locals up here don't own cars. Others simply don't drive. Even the ones who do face an uphill climb. So if you're making six or seven dollars an hour and you have to drive 20 or 25 miles to work, you can just start to do the math and see that it just isn't working out. Or if we could provide maybe some small uh, van, shuttle, buses um, on a very inexpensive basis, uh, that would make a lot of sense. A lot of these people go to work and they're place bound. They start work at one hour and they stay at that work until another hour. So they don't have to have movement in between that. So we think that a, a transportation system could work out. The lack of a public transportation system affects most everyone. It certainly affects the disabled community. Christine and her husband took in her brother Stephen when their father died six years ago. Stephen has Down syndrome and lived in Waukesha County with his dad before he died. Down there, Stephen held a job and was a productive member of the community. But here in the North Woods, it's been a much different story. He is on the waiting list and in 2002, I received a letter saying that we were number nine. He was number nine on the list. And now I just received another letter um, just last week. So five years have gone by and he is now number six on the list. So in five years, he's moved up three spaces. So at this point, it'll be another 10 years before he receives any type of services which is a shame because he really um, does need to go to work to feel productive. And we could also use a break. Stephen requires round-the-clock care. So Christine's husband stays at home to help him through the challenges that each day brings. Christine and her husband have sacrificed their lives in order to care for her brother. But to Christine, she and her husband are the only ones who care. I've written many letters and spoken to congressmen and legislators and senators and basically the response I get is um, rest assured we are on top of this and we will do something but six years have gone by and we've gotten nothing. Um, I've gone to the board meetings to the developmentally disabled board meetings and I've spoken um, several times about Stephen's plight and I was basically told yes we've heard your story before there's nothing we can do for you so here we sit unfortunately Christine and her family have a lot of company Lisa Gilson and her mother Carol live in Minocqua they've pleaded with local and county officials for the past 12 years to implement a permanent transportation system for the challenged, to no avail. It seems like it's uh, a slow process to get anything accomplished for the challenged. It just seems like everybody has their own things going and um, tell us they can't handle more. But I think that it's important that they understand that our challenged people are individuals and also need the same types of things that everyone else has. It has been quite a struggle to get any commitment from anyone and follow through to help solve this important transportation problem for the challenged of our area. If we have transportation in our area, I would not only help, it would not only help the seniors and challenge, but it would help every single person in the area who needs a ride. I hope that the towns help our challenged individuals 
get transportation and I feel in my heart that we're, we're not trying to beg or anything like that. We're just trying to, to get somewhere and we, and we need your help. Thank you. Fortunately, there's a nonprofit organization in Rhinelander that stands out as a savior for the challenged. Headwaters Incorporated provides programming for more than 350 people. Headwaters work program is nothing short of miraculous. Many of our people that cannot go out into competitive employment, so we subcontract to area businesses and we bring work into the uh, workshop and they perform work here. Um, we have a great uh, shredding business. Um, we do a lot of work for Dr. Foster and Smith. We do a lot of shrink wrapping. We do a lot of work for True Flight. And so what happens is they come in and they work here at Headwaters and they receive a paycheck. And they're very proud of, of what they can do. And I always say that Headwaters has the best workforce um, in, in Oneida County. They never miss work. And how does the best workforce in Oneida County get to work? In a Headwaters van, of course. We provide transportation in the Tri-County area. We have 15 passenger vans that pick up people at their homes and we bring them into the center. They're just like you and me. They're very proud of the things that they can do, the money that they earn. Money in the form of grants fund the headwater vans you see driving throughout the community every day. But those vans would go nowhere if not for continuous grant writing. We, we can get vehicles in there in the Tri-County area to help with our transportation problem. But the other problem you've got is how do you pay for the insurance? How do agencies pay for the gas? How do agencies pay for the drivers? What we're trying to do is find a transport, a rural transportation system in the Tri-County area that would not only serve people with dis uh, disabilities and the elderly, but also the general population. We, along with the UW Extension, put out a transit survey. And now what we are doing is analyzing the data and hopefully from this data, we can uh, set up more of a coordinated transportation system and start really educating county boards, the state, the federal government on the struggles that uh, rural counties um, have with, with transportation. And we all know you can't be integrated you, into a community unless you have transportation.